Sudan stands on the brink of yet another civil war. And the conflict is destroying the country's economy. Disrupting internal trade routes, threatening imports and triggering a cash crunch. Since a military coup in October 2021, Sudan is facing economic pressures such as a high inflation rate, extremely low foreign reserves and the international community's suspension of financial aid. The inflation rate is predicted to fall to 115.7% this year from 236.4% in 2022. At least 39% of Sudanese people are facing extreme levels of food insecurity and malnutrition. About a third of the 46 million population depends on humanitarian aid due to decades of sanctions and international isolation. In the capital Khartoum, many banks, shops and markets have been looted or damaged. Power and water supplies have been failing and residents have reported a steep rise in prices and shortages of basic goods. Food prices have skyrocketed or at least doubled and there's a shortage of many commodities. Flour, for example, is in short supply and most stores are completely out. I don't know what's going on with my home in Khartoum North. I fear my house might have been looted. But Sudan's economy was stumbling even before the latest conflict. The clashes have destroyed everything, with the public security deteriorating and tourism stagnating. All the social and economic activities have been cancelled and there are no cultural and sports events. According to the former deputy governor of Sudan Central Bank, in order to save the economy, reversing the coup and negotiating a truce deal are essential. But the political developments and recent fighting between the army and the rapid support forces are impeding Sudan's recovery efforts. And the nation finds itself confronted with its most severe economic crisis to date. Tülay Kalyon, Haznederoğlu, TRT World. Let's get more on this now with economist Agnes Gitau in London. She's the executive director for the UK and EU at the Eastern Africa Association and partner at GBS Africa. Really good to have you back with us, Agnes. It goes without saying that the human cost of this conflict in Sudan is obviously of uh, the most paramount concern. More than 600 people have been killed in this conflict, uh, more than 5,000 injured and many more displaced. But if we look at the Sudan's economy in particular, even before this conflict, it, it was already fragile, wasn't it? it Describe to us the state of the economy before the fighting began in April. Oscar, thank you so much for having me. Um, you're absolutely right. The human cost, the humanitarian cri the, the crisis of cost is beyond, is unexplainable, but beyond, be, even before this started, you're already aware under President Bashar, there was already deep issues on the economy uh, due to corruption, high rates of in inflation. Um, Sudanese currency uh, had depreciated greatly against the USD and the, as your reporter earlier said, the trade routes had been disrupted already. And, and we saw the last two, year, two years signs of recovery through the transition government under Prime Minister Hamdak. That was not sustainable because after a year under his leadership, um, we saw uh, conflict begin again. So suddenly, really tough times for Sudan. And as as you can, as from the images you've shown, it is clear there is really an important need for people to intervene, both regional and international communities. The impact on crisis goes beyond Sudan. You know, it goes, it has an impact on neighboring countries who already are not very stable. We're thinking about Chad, Central African Republic, Eritrea, Ethiopia. Um, so these, unless it is resolved, will have deep, deeper impact on neighboring countries just not beyond Sudan. 